have the, the solution or how much we have to continue working on this to give the answers that uh, some people is asking to us to do. Okay, uh, I don't know if you would like to make any comment to the presentation of Manuel, if it's the moment. But of course, I, I thank you to show us the reality of this system environment. But now need, we need to move to the last part, because this is also research. And, uh, Just to close the, the conference, today we have Lucia Inigo with us. She is Master Civil Engineer of the University Polytechnic of Madrid, and she works in the CDTI, C -D -T -I, the Spanish Innovation Agency. She has an extensive experience in the field of research and development European projects, with a focus on getting ideas into the market for the benefit of the society. She is an expert in European innovation policy and EU comitology and negotiation processes, using her international skills every day to overcome cultural barriers. Currently working on the industrial leadership pillar of Horizon 2020, building the future EU investment priorities, nanotechnology, advanced materials, biotechnology, and advanced manufacturing and processing until 2020. And she is also involved in the discussion of the forthcoming Horizon <coughs> Europe EU program. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Pepe, for the kind introduction. And thank you to the Lord Senis Project for the invitation to the Spanish Innovation <coughs> Agency to share this workshop with you. I have the uh, good news and bad news. The good news is that I am the uh, the bad news is that I'm the last, th almost last thing providing you to go to a, a nice networking and lunch. But the good news is that uh, we think it might be worth for you. What we are going to do now, as uh, Mary Cruz asked me, is uh, to take a hot air balloon and go very high, high up in the sky to see the really big picture. What uh, what's the place of sustainability? in the current thinking in the in the Commission, in the Euro European Commission, and what we are going to find in the next calls for, uh, for, uh, for research, what's the way forward for the research we are doing in, in projects like Los Senes. Uh, a bit about the political context, there's a lot going on about sustainability in the European Commission right now. And it was one of the priorities of the President Juncker when he, he started. And uh, uh, it has also a lot to do with, uh, with global policy, not only European policy. Uh, in this context, we, we have the, uh, the Paris Agreement in 2015 and all, all what has been done, building on that through the years in the, in the year conference, a lot about sustainability with a focus on reducing CO2 emissions, but also in life cycle assessment and how the future products in Europe and globally should, should be. Also in the global scene, we have the Sustainable Development Goals uh, adopted by the United <coughs> Nations, and quite a lot of them uh, uh, have to do with materials, with new materials, and uh, also with the construction materials. We talk about industry and innovation. We talk about sustainability, uh, especially in sustainable cities and communities. We talk a lot about climate action, reduction of CO2, uh, but also affordable and clear energy. And there's a lot of hot topics for the construction sector uh, uh, out there in those, in those priorities, if we go, do, go down to the, to the details. Also, the circular economy package is one of the highlights of the policy of the Commission of the last, uh, of the last years. It's a very strong uh, uh, um, package on uh, laws and new regulation. And uh, there's indeed uh, some uh, documents out there on stuff, uh, working documents on how the, the future product environmental footprint has to be measured and leveled and uh, how to build that uh, in, uh, in Europe and how to make it also uh, like that in the, rest, uh, in the rest of the world. So putting Europe really in the lead of these new sustainable materials and, and products. Of course, also the energy union, which is one of the priorities of the European Commission uh, uh, right now, also very relevant for the construction sector. And all of this building uh, uh, in a lot of uh, work done already by the uh, environmental departments of the European Commission related to uh, uh, product policy, labeling and, and regulation and standards to be able to sell the, the products in the European market. So, there's a lot of, of things uh, uh, that have been done 
about uh, key performance indicators and building on that and to make it not only from the environmental perspective but the wider social perspective as a bit of the of the trending topic right now in the commission if you think if we think uh, not only on a global level but uh, in the construction sector we have of course the european regulation of products and it's very linked to the circular economic package uh, actually we have talked here about a lot of about uh, uh, um, cradle to grave and now it's even talking about cradle to cradle so how to to, to make uh, the whole circle and how to use construction waste into new products because we have here also uh, this morning that uh, a lot of co2 emissions come from from the production of the uh, uh, materials uh, for the construction sector so this reusing of materials is also a very hot topic in the commission right now there's a lot of going on also at national level uh, uh, following this uh, trend of the commission on circular economy and uh, uh, the focus that has its main in Spain about that based in, in for example reports of, uh, of Cotec is that construction materials are seen as a, as a very uh, important point uh, to be introduced in this strategy and in the circular uh, economy perspective uh, because it's a, a, a huge source of, of waste materials that in some cases uh, don't, uh, we don't know what to do with, uh, with them in an environmental friendly manner and on the other hand because of these uh, CO2 emissions and in fact construction is one of the priority sectors of the Spanish uh, uh, circular economy strategy to, uh, towards 2030 the focus there is on, on construction materials waste but as we have here here not only waste is relevant and one of the ob objectives will be to have less waste because we have more sustainable infrastructures uh, so some of the global challenges for European <laughs> construction sector in this uh, sense uh, will be how to deal with this uh, trend of environmental energy efficient and sustainable uh, materials and infrastructures for the future and understanding why this constru uh, construction product could uh, give this uh, uh, life cycle analysis considering cradle to cradle and uh, considering not only environmental but also societal, societal aspects. And uh, the Commission has identified this, uh, identified this life cycle assessment like last one of the uh, key points to guide the sectors, uh, not only construction but uh, all the sectors through this uh, uh, new future regulation and leveling of, of products. As uh, Adolf Loss uh, said a lot of uh, uh, time about, about construction materials, what has more value, one kilogram of stone or one kilogram of gold? I think the workshop today showed us that uh, 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 what his conclusion was, what that is, it depends. It depends where you are, it, it depends on where the, this material is and we have seen that even, even with uh, uh, concrete, if we only talk about concrete, what's the value of a normal concrete or for a high performance concrete it depends a lot of on the time scale and what you do what you want to do with it at the end of, of the of the cycle of, of, of the, the life that's uh, why this has become very important from this very high level policy to the very concrete research priorities of the commission in the NAC in the next years building on all, all these uh, uh, big picture things that I've mentioned we, if you go to the research program of the Commission Horizon 2020 and uh, specifically to what they call key enabled technologies which includes advanced materials and production we see that this vision is, is, uh, has really been uh, translated into concrete priorities that in a lot of cases uh, uh, name the sustainability of the new materials and products and this life cycle assessment uh, approach uh, in the sense uh, I would like to talk to you about the uh, AMANAC work uh, um, cluster of projects. Uh, AMANAC is a cluster of projects that builds on uh, two previous CSAs, coordination and super actions. Some of the members of Los Angeles were involved in the uh, uh, CSAs, uh, one and more in the uh, uh, energy efficient building site and one more in the materials uh, in the material site. Right now, it's not, no, no, not more a project, but it's a cluster of projects running right now with, uh, uh, with advanced materials for, for construction. And uh, the shift is now not only to dissemination of results of these projects, but also to be uh, a source 
of uh, information for the Commission for the next uh, uh, policy. So in this sense, they had um, a workshop uh, end October last year in Vienna, also talking about the life cycle, life cycle analysis, life cycle cost analysis, and uh, including also societal aspects. So if you have interest, I would recommend you to go to the cluster webpage and look for a presentation of that workshop, which were very uh, interesting. And uh, uh, the, the focus there is uh, also this uh, uh, enlarged uh, life cycle assessment. So joining uh, environmental footprint with societal uh, views and with the, of course, with the cost, because this is a, a matter of investment in the, in the, in the end. Uh, as Esteban said also in his presentation, how do we make final contractors to pay a bit more and uh, to, if we don't have yet the guarantee of uh, what we are going to offer in the long, in the, in the long term, regulation might help, because uh, if at some point you uh, you have uh, the responsibility in your hands to deal with some new regulation, that could be a, a, a bit of a push. But uh, still, things ha have to be done, and that's why the European Commission continues in investing in this kind of projects. For those of you who doesn't know Horizon 2020, Horizon 2020 is a research program of the Commission providing grants for uh, uh, collaboration, uh, collaborative projects. Los Angeles is one of them, uh, funded in a call of 2015, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong. It's uh, really a, the, the, the most open program, research program of, uh, of the world, open not only to European countries, but uh, uh, to all countries. But uh, the focus is on tackling uh, European uh, uh, and, and global problems. And uh, uh, the main thing of it is uh, it's, not, it's open in terms of participation. Everyone can participate, but it's relatively close in terms of priorities. If there are certain priorities per year that, can be, uh, that, can be, that you can apply for, and uh, um, it's, uh, it's very important to how we work together with the Commission from the member states and all, all also uh, from clusters last, uh, like Amanac on setting these priorities for, for, the, for the future. The materials uh, calls are a bit of everywhere because you know that the materials are everywhere, but uh, uh, specifically if we talk about sustainability and, uh, and uh, and life cycle uh, analysis, you will find them in the second pillar of this program, which is the uh, industrial leadership, and specifically in the calls of NMBP, which are nanotechnology, biotechnology, advanced materials, and advanced manufacturing and, and processing. And you will find them uh, um, in a framework of three focus areas. And the th I think the three focus areas are, are very relevant for what has been told here during this morning. We talk about uh, digitalization, and uh, you talk a lot about that also, big data and artificial intelligence, also for the construction sector. We talk about circular economy and sustainability, and we talk about CO2 and decar decarbonization of, uh, of the industrial sectors in, in Europe. The calls of the NMVP part have uh, three main chapters, and uh, as you see, the third one and the biggest one, 665 million for 2017-2020, is the industrial sustainability one. So uh, you can see the importance that the, th that, uh, the theme has uh, right now in the, in, the, in the calls. And if I have to mention three of uh, examples of these priorities, uh, uh, I would say that in 2020, we are expecting topics on energy efficient manu manufacturing system management, industrialization of building envelope kits for the renovation market, which especially, uh, specifically uh, talks about uh, life cycle assessment and sustainability of these products, and a very relevant one on materials life cycle sustainability analysis. Uh, uh, in, the, in the wide range, but uh, uh, it's a good opportunity also to, to work more towards uh, sustainable materials, the key performance indicators needed to, to tackle the objectives of the Commission in, uh, in this kind uh, of things. And I would just like to add two other ones that came to my mind while we were, I was listening to you this morning. One is the digital twin for uh, uh, energy efficient buildings. This year for energy efficient buildings, but why not in the future for other infrastructures? It's a way to have all this data 
in a sustainable manner and a structured manner and to take information from that. So very relevant if you are uh, monitoring infrastructure and if you manage more than one infrastructure. Uh, uh, and the other one is a CSA on uh, uh, the state of the, to, to help the commission know what's the state of the art on, uh, on uh, maintenance of infrastructure. And that's a direct reaction to the accident with the, with the bridge in Italy from the commission. So also a call is going to be provided uh, with, uh, I think it's one, one and a half million of euros for a consortium to work uh, in a report on the state of the art of maintenance uh, for this kind of infrastructure and what has to be done in the future, in future priorities in what uh, will we call Horizon Europe. It's also very relevant for you, I think. And uh, um, as uh, we are out of time, I'm not going to tell you what I, uh, I was planning to tell you about the participation of Spain. I will just tell you that Lausanne is, is a big, uh, uh, nice example of good participation of Spain in, uh, in, uh, in this program. We are right now the second country in participation after uh, Germany in the part of, uh, of materials and production, which is a very good, uh, a very good result. So if you go ahead with projects for 2020 or even uh, further, uh, don't forget to take Spanish, uh, uh, very good Spanish participants also in your projects. Thank you very much.